Please follow us on Facebook, New Hope International Church, Facebook and Varula Haprasit, and the YouTube channel, the New Hope International Church for Thai language, and also Varula Haprasit channel for English language. The Instagram for the English one called New Hick, N E W H I C, and also TikTok, New Hope International Church, or at New Hope International, so you never miss a teaching of the Word of God and the blessing to your life. God bless you. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. I would like to invite you to listen to this teaching. I believe the Lord will speak to you. Thank you so much. I would like to talk about raising the next generation. Raising the next generation. Is the most important task that we all need to do. If you study the Bible carefully, you will see that our God is the God of generations. That's why one of His name that we call in the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He think about the son and the grandson, and on and on and on. He is a God of The generations to come. Raising the kids, raising the next generation, is one of the most difficult tasks that man can do, that human can get involved with. But it's so important that we need to prepare for the next generation. I just went back to Thailand and I went to visit my dad a couple of times. My my mom passed away already. My dad was 106 years old. 106. And I was standing there, I greeted him, I salute him, and when I was standing there looking at him, I remember when I was a little toddler, he was about 30 years old. He was a very handsome, good-looking man. And I was thinking, wow, now he's 106, and now I'm getting older too. And I have three children, and also we have three grandchildren as well. So we're all going to pass away one day, generation to generation. Therefore, it's good to know the biblical principle, how to raise the next generation. I will not be able to finish the whole sermon today because it's a long sermon. I will continue next time. How to raise the next generation. I would like to read from Judges chapter 2, verse 10. This sermon is going to be in the series, playlist in the YouTube called Raising Kids Godly Way. We have taught some of the principle of how to raise children. So please go back and listen to previous teachings in this series. Let me read from Judges chapter 2, verse 10. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. This is a reminding scripture that the parents, the dad, the mom, the teachers, and the priests of that generation did not train and raise their children very well to know what matters in life, what is the important thing about eternity, about relationship with the Creator and their God. Therefore, after they pass away, the next generation did not know the Lord. And I don't want this to happen in New Hope International Church. The Israelites of that next generation got into trouble and they faced so many problems. They faced judgment because the parents did not raise that generation very well. This scripture warns us that we should make sure that we raise the next generation to know what matters in life, to know the principle of God, to know that God loved them, and to have a personal relationship with God. We need to think about eternity too, because we want to meet our children in heaven. We don't want to miss them. That's why this subject is important, that we want to leave the spiritual godly legacy behind. We leave it to the next generation. So after we die and pass away, we can have peace that our children and grandchildren 
knows the Lord, and they have faith in God, and they will meet us in heaven for sure. It's true that we need to know how to raise the next generation, and they need to know the value of life. They need to know that God loved them so much, and they need to remember what God did for their parents and grandparents. If you are the second generation Christians. They need to remember all those things. They need to know their God. And we need to pass on the value, the godly value to the next generation and train them to be godly people so that they can serve God and they can be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that to raise kids require a lot of tears and sweat and energy and time and commitment It's not an easy job. It's one of the most difficult jobs in the world. You may be a very successful CEO of a big company, but you may not know how to raise kids. That's a problem. Actually, raising kids is more difficult than being a CEO of a big company. It's something you need to be trained, and you need to know, understand the biblical principle. Before I go on to talk about raising children, I want to. Convince you first that in the eyes of God, children matter. In the book of Psalm, chapter 127, verse 3, three, children are a gift from the Lord, and they are a real blessing. To the eyes of the Lord, the children are the blessing, are the gift from God. They matter to God. As they they matter to God, they should matter to us as well. I. I'm so glad I live in America, where the government and the society really value children. That's why they build good school and they really try to do everything to protect children. No one can abuse children. I used to work at children hospital, and when I see the children got abused by somebody, oh wow, it's a big deal. The government will take that big deal when somebody abuse children. I see that our society really value and respect children, and we should do the same thing. Our God really think that children matter to you and to Him. So we should look at children, not only your children, but other children in the church as well, and children around you. You need to look at them as valuable people. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. Beware that you do not despise or feel scornful toward or think little of one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven the angels always are in the presence of and look upon the face of my Father who is in heaven. The Lord Jesus said that children matter so much; they're so valuable. He sent big. Powerful being called angels to look after them after they are born. Do you know that God sent angel to look after you since you were little children? He did not send angel to take care of only big guy, rich guy, famous guy on earth. He valued the children so much that they, he sent the angel to look after little children. So, in the eyes of God, children matter. Let me read one more scripture. Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Jesus said, "Don't stop children from coming to me. Children like this are part of the kingdom of God." Wow, God say, children are the part of the kingdom. Jesus came to the world to build His kingdom, to expand His kingdom. To bring more souls, more heart to Him, so that the kingdom of God will enter into your life, and you are a part of the kingdom of God. And Jesus say, children so valuable in His eyes. Children are a part of God's kingdom as well. So we can see that again and again, the Scripture illustrate to us that children matter to God. So from now on, you should look at children. In the way God look at them, that they matter, they are important, they are valuable. That's why we should 
raise our children in the right way, in the godly way, we pass on to them the godly legacy. And not only that, we should take care of other children in our society as well. We should care for the children. Another scripture, Matthew 18, verse 6. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around the neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Oh, this is a strong sentence. Jesus said that if anybody caused children to walk away from God, to be stumbled, to sin against God, to think negative against God, and to go to hell, to cause the children to backslide, to get into trouble. Maybe you stumble them, you commit sin in front of them. Maybe parents watch pornography in front of the children, make the children like, wow, this is crazy. Or the parents get into big sin and the children walk away from God. Maybe you claim to, to be a Christian, but your life is in a mess. You don't obey God. The children will be stumbled. And Jesus said, this is serious because it's better for him to have a millstone on the neck and thrown into the sea. Again, Jesus sees the importance of children. Children matter to God. The Word of God says about children again and again and again. So in the eyes of God, God never looked at children as human becoming. Children are human beings, not becoming. Not human becoming. They are human beings. So we should treat them with respect and with love and acceptance. We should love the children and raise them very well in a godly way. We make sure that we pass on to them the godly heritage or legacy to them, that they will know God, they will love God, and they are valuable in our eyes, they are valuable in our church, they are valuable in our society and our country. We should think about the next generation to come. We should have that mindset. Next generation going to be better than me. I'm going to train them to love God, to be a godly person, and to follow God. Not only that, in the eyes of God, in the way of God, children contribute something good to us. Yes, we raise them up, but you know, children also are the instrument of God to make us stronger, to make us become more mature, and to become a better person. I noticed that adults who have no children at all and never care about children tend to be like children. But adults who take care of children tend to grow up more, tend to be more giving, more sacrificial, instead of being self-centered and selfish. The adults who take care of the children tend to be sacrificial and think about the benefit of others. So God used children to really help us to grow up more. This is the reason why we need to take this seriously. In fact, the first sentence that come out from God after he created Adam and Eve, he said, bless you, be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. Wow. The first command, the first thing that God said from his mouth to human being is, be fruitful. So God wants you to have kids, and multiply, and fill the earth with godly people. It's our job to expand the Garden of Eden into the world and multiply and train our children to know God, to love God, to become mature Christians and to be fruitful, to be the blessing to the nations, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We want to multiply and fill the earth, not with wicked people, sinful people, but righteous people. So parents have the job to train the children to fill the earth. Having children really is a good thing to us. Make us grow more. Make us become more mature. Because we learn how to be patient, how to love unconditionally, 
how to sacrifice our time, how to give up our own right for the children. Therefore, to have children help us to grow more, to become more mature, to become a better person. You need a child in your life, all of us, even single people. You're single, you say, oh, I don't, I don't have kids. Actually, you need a child in your life. A child may be your nephew, maybe your niece, maybe a child of your neighbor, of the church friend. You should get involved in helping the children to love God. <laughs> I went to Thailand this time. One couple looked after us. And they have three years old daughter. I always talk to her, play with her. And the whole time when she is around me, I play with her. I talk to her, encourage her. And it's so funny, the last night in Bangkok, before we left, the parents say, say bye-bye to Pastor Lau. He is leaving back to Seattle. And you know what happened? She cried. Oh, I don't want him to leave. So it means that she started to be attached to me. <laughs> she loved to play with me. Every time she sees me, she run around and want to play with me. Why? Because I love children. I want to show love to children so that this girl, three years old girl, will grow up one day and remember that, wow, this Christian pastor is so humble, so loving, and so kind to me. And she will have good impression with Christianity with the children of God, with the servant of God. We need to really reach out to the children, greet them, love them, and we should know that their life benefits us. When we talk to children and show love to children, we grow more. We become like little children too. We humble ourselves to play with the children, and we grow more. Actually, the Bible says, if you don't change and you don't become like this little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. God wants us to learn from children how to be like a little child. So, children matter to God. Everyone say, children, children. Matter, to God. matter to God. They matter to us too. Yes. Amen? We should look at the children as valuable people, precious people. The fundamental mission of mom and dad especially mom, is always the same from the beginning in the time of Adam and Eve. That is to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. This mission is very difficult. It's one of the hardest jobs to do. I always say to Pastor Da that I have a difficult job performing brain surgery, but she has a more difficult job than me to raise three children because it's about raising the next generation to become more like Jesus Christ. So we need to take this job seriously. We need to take this mission seriously. And this mission requires a lot of works to nurture the kids, to teach, to instruct, to protect the kids, to bring them to know God, and to know the purpose of their life, to love God, to become disciple of Jesus Christ, to become a mature man and woman who one day will be the blessing to the kingdom of God. Train them to seek the kingdom of God first, to experience the goodness of the Lord, to love the Bible, to love the Word, and love the Holy Spirit, to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. That is our mission. Our mission to our children is that we raise them up to love Jesus Christ and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And they can do the same thing. They can train the next generation and next generation and next generation to come. Amen. Keep passing on the spiritual, godly legacy to the next generation. I did not grow up in a Christian home. I grew up in a Buddhist home. And I saw so many ungodly things in my life, worshiping idols and a lot of stuff. After I gave my life to Jesus Christ in 1981, I never forgot. I make a vow to God. I'm going to stop this wrong 
heritage in my life, this ungodly heritage, I'm going to start a new legacy, godly legacy. I will be the first generation to start that legacy and pass on to my kids and grandkids. That's why after that, we always took our kids to church, get them in the Sunday school, learn the Bible. We set good example to them at that time. We did not have a big church like this, so we had to do a lot of things. We always took them along to, with us to serve God, and they see us that, wow, my dad and my mom really were serious about God. They're really faithful Christians. We want to train them up to be good Christian. Being a mom really takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of effort, and you need to make sure that your kids go to the right school, have the right group of friends, get involved in the right kind of activities, and they have the right heart, they have the right attitude, they grow up, they change, the heart is pure. You need to train them to grow up you impart into them the Word of God. You show them godly example. And at the same time, you trust the Holy Spirit to make sure the seed that you sow into their heart will keep growing and growing and growing. You do your part, and you trust God by praying for them and depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to work in their life. That is the job of the mom and dad. We need to do that. It's an awesome privilege to do that. For the next generation. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Proverbs 14, 1. A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears hers down with her own hands. Wow, this is a very strong scripture. How many people want to be wise woman? Raise your hand up. How many people want to be foolish woman? Raise your hand up. No. Nobody raise your hand. Being a foolish woman. The Bible says that you need to be wise. And you can build your house with your own hand. What does it mean to use your own hand? It means you need to have a determination. You need to really make right choices every day. You need to make the right decision to build godly heritage and legacy. And it takes your word and action. You need to do something, your hand. I mean, you need to do something. You cannot just sit there like this. You need to do something to build your next generation. Not only that, hand means power. You have the power from heaven. You have authority from heaven to raise your kids. God say, with your own hand, either you destroy, <laughs> you destroy your house, or with your own hand, you build your house. You need to make the right choice and make the right decision and determination. I want to paint the picture of building a house. If you build a physical house, you need somebody who knows architect, architectural thing and know how to do the cement and woodwork, but we are not talking about physical house here. We are talking about spiritual house here, the house that worship God. In order to build a house, you need to have the right foundation. With wrong foundation, the house will fall. What is the foundation of your house, of your family? The Lord Jesus Christ. You need to build your house on the foundation of Jesus. Jesus must be your God. Everything is for Jesus is to glorify Jesus. Not only that, you need to put the bricks in. Put the bricks into the house. Day by day, little by little, one brick at a time. You put the brick in. What are the bricks? The bricks are love, peace, joy, patience, long-suffering, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When a wife shows respect and kindness to her husband in front or even behind the scene, in front of the children. You are putting the good brick into your house. The children look at you. Oh, mom. Mommy, she respect my daddy. 
She is kind to my daddy instead of yelling to my daddy. You are building the brick. Every time you show kindness and patience to your little toddler who has a lot of demand on you, mommy, mommy, I need this, and you show kindness and patience. You are putting another brick into your house. Every time your kids see that. Wow, my mom and my dad—they read the Bible, they pray together, they love God, they never miss church. They are so faithful member of the church. They always go to the small group, and they study Bible and they pray. Every time they see that, you are putting another brick in to build their life. Every time you forgive your enemies, people who hurt you, you put another brick in. And your kids look at you. Wow, my parents are godly people. You build a house by putting the right brick in. You have two choices: putting the right brick, have the right foundation, Jesus, or you use your hand to tear it down, to damage your house by bad behavior, emotion, negative words, cursing words, and Not being faithful, you can tear your house as well. So it's a determination that you need to do every single day. You make choices every day to build that house. The Bible says that the woman built her house by the wisdom, a wise woman. When you read the verse, uh, the uh, phrase, a wise woman, you may think, oh, that is unattainable, that is unreachable. That is impossible. I'm just a regular member of the church. Maybe the wise woman is that pastor, is that preacher, that person who finished Bible school. Oh, that is a wrong idea. Wisdom is free. Wisdom come from God. Anybody who believe in Jesus and ask Jesus for wisdom, you will get wisdom from God. And you build your house by depending on the wisdom of God. All the ladies, please ask God for wisdom. James chapter one verse five say, "If you need wisdom, ask our generous God. Our God is generous. He's not a stingy God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking." Everyone say, "Ask God, ask God. for wisdom." You need to ask God for wisdom all the time. What to say, what to do, how you raise your kids every day. Ask God for the wisdom. So this is spiritual foundation. Depending on the grace of God, the wisdom of God, you need to make a right decision, determination in your own hand. You have that power to build your house. You have the authority to build your house. And make sure that you pass this on to your kids. The good news is, when you do the right thing to your children in this generation, next generation to come, they will impact the next generation and next generation and next generation. It will not stop only one generation. That's why I like what the Bible says: When you love God and obey God, God will bless you, and to the thousand generations. How many people like the word thousand? Thousand generations. So your investment will not stay only in one generation, but it will go to a thousand generation. This is fun. It's worth investment that you will do that, and we can see that in the scripture, in Second Timothy chapter one verse five, that precious memory triggers another. Your honest faith, and what is what a rich faith it is. Paul said, Timothy, wow! When I look at you, you are a man of faith. You're the man, a faithful man. Wow! I'm so impressed with you. This is a, bring me to a memory. Memory of what? Handed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice, and now to you. Generation to generation to generation, 
The grandmother was a woman of faith. Her name is Lois. Passed down to the next generation, Eunice, the mother of Timothy. And then next generation, Timothy. From generation to generation, Paul commended or complimented Timothy's godly heritage because his mom and his grandma were the godly mothers and passed on to the next generation. I pray that one of these days, after you leave this world, your children and grandchildren will mention your name as a reference point. You know, honey, talk to her husband. You know, honey, my mom, my grandmom is this way. That's why I'm like this today. Because I see the faith. I see the faithfulness and the godliness in my mom and my grandmother. You're going to be the reference point to the thousand generation to come. One day, I went to the house of the dean of uh, Northwest University. I know the dean. I went to his house, and he took me to the second floor of his house. He has about seven pictures on the wall, seven pictures. He showed me each picture, and he told me he is a seven-generation Christian. He showed me each mom, grandma, great-grandma, seven generation, And that's why he is a dean of the Christian Northwest College, because he was trained very well by his prior generation. This is a serious thing. Please, you yourself take serious of growing spiritually and become strong Christian. And you learn how to train your children to become also committed Christians as well. It starts from you, this generation. You need to train them. You pass on the spiritual heritage. Building this kind of heritage is not a cakewalk. It's not easy. Wow. You may have sweat. You may lose sleep at night. You may cry sometime. You may need to say, <clears throat> I'm going to be patient with my children. My teenagers just yell at me. <laughs> you, you need to be patient. It, it's not easy. But if you don't give up, you keep planting the seeds of righteousness, planting the seeds of faith into their life to know Jesus more and more. One day you're going to see the harvest. The seed going to grow up to be a big tree. But you need to determine to do that, that I'm going to pass on the godly heritage or legacy to my next generation. The question is, what are you passing on to the next generation? Ungodliness or godliness? What are you passing on, faith or doubt? What are you passing on to them, holiness or wickedness? What you are passing on to them, curses or blessing? I pray that you will make the right choice to pass on to the next generation the right thing. You may need to spend some time with them. It's not easy. You may need to give up your sleep time. I never heard any mom say, raising a kid is easy. Never heard in my life. All the moms say, Raising the kids is very difficult. I know it's difficult, but it's worth it. It's worth your time and your energy. You need to do your part. This is why one of the jobs that I have in this church is to help you to become strong Christian, mom and dad. Because if you're not strong Christian, you're going to impart the wrong thing in your kids, into your kids. If you're stingy, your kids are going to be stingy. You pass that stinginess or the curse of stinginess into them. If you goof around, you're going to pass on the goofy things in your children. You need to make sure you grow up spiritually. What do you do? Commitment, faith, determination, decision, attention, 
choices. You need to make sure you have godliness in your life. You spend time, faithfulness, and depend on God. You need to make the right choice every day to do the right thing. And it's worth it that you pass on to the next generation the right thing. And God will do His part to help you. He will give you wisdom. He will give you grace. He will give you power. He will give you favor. He will work in the heart of your children as you pray for them. He will work behind the scene to help your children to grow up to be a strong believer, to be godly people. You do your part, God will do His part. You need to really make a commitment, I'm going to do this. You have a purpose in your life. If you get married, getting married is not just about living with your spouse. Getting married is more than that. It means you're going to do something with your children that were born in your family. You're going to raise them up in a godly way. It's a commitment. It's a determination. You need to do that. And when you do that, you're going to see, you're going to smile at the end. Before you die, wow, my children are doing so well. And my grandchildren are learning from me and from my children as well. You're going to see the next generation to grow up spiritually. All what I say here is not just only for the parents who have kids, but all the adults who are single and who don't have kids should have the same mentality toward children in the church or in your community or in your family line, your nephew, your niece. You need to think this way. I will impart right thing into all these kids. I want to pass the good things into the next generation. Always see the kids valuable. Amen? Amen. So you can offer your kids five things. Today I'm going to talk about one thing only, quickly, in order to pass on the godly legacy or inheritance. I want to talk about one thing today. What do you do to pass on the godly heritage or legacy? Let me read from Scripture here. Matthew chapter 18, verse 5. Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. The first thing you can offer to the children, whether your own children or the children of others, is we call acceptance. Everyone say acceptance. acceptance. This is not a psychology thing. It's the biblical truth. We welcome the children, regardless of their appearance or how they behave or who their parents are. We welcome them. We love them. We accept them who they are. Amen? We need to accept them that way. I know that to accept children are exhausting and can be frustrating because sometimes they act up and they, they make you upset. But we need to accept them unconditionally. I read a story of a very good Christian. She said that when she was a young girl, she was competing in her school to be selected to do something in the school. And she thought she did really well, but unfortunately, she failed. The teacher did not pick her to be a part of the team. She came home, she ran into the closet and cried and cried and cried because she was rejected by the teacher. Suddenly, the mom walked in and put her hand on the shoulder of this little girl, this lady. Now she grew up. She is a strong Christian. Then the dad walked in and cry too. And then another brother walk in, the youngest brother walk in and cry without knowing why he crying. He saw her cry, so I cry too. Another sister walk in and sit there and cry too. Everyone cry with her. They did not say, why you fail? Why did you get, do better job? Maybe next time. They did not say anything. 
They just say, "We love you. You are valuable to us. We love you." That's all they say. And this lady say that that experience really make her to become strong Christian today, because she realized that her mom and dad and her brother and sister accepted her unconditionally, even though she failed at school to be selected by her teacher. But her family accepted her unconditionally. We need to do that. We need to accept people, accept kids unconditionally. I noticed something in my Christian walk. I noticed that adults who came from broken homes or came from the home that have no parents, orphanage. Come from orphan, the the parents dump them and move on. All these adults usually have problem with the emotion and self-esteem, and have a hard time relating to people. You know, when you really accept your kids unconditionally, it will pave the way for them to be successful in the future. It will help them to have very good self-esteem, and in the future. They can have good relationship with people. They can smile. They can say hi to their boss. They are friendly to their coworkers. But kids who grow up with rejection tend to retaliate other people. Okay, I was rejected by my family, my dad, my mom. I'm going to reject my friend, and they have no self-esteem, no self-confidence, and they cause trouble in society. This is why it's so important that. As believers, we need to accept children unconditionally. Amen. Children mean your own children and the children of other family. Love them, play with them, hug them, and you're gonna see that that personality change because they feel the love from you. They feel the acceptance from you. To accept children, welcome children, is a action of honoring Jesus Christ. When you welcome little children, you welcome him. So, if you want to honor Jesus, do you want to honor Jesus? Yes. Do you want Jesus to show favor to you? Yes. One thing you can do is to accept and welcome little children, and he consider that you welcome him as well. Amen? Amen. You accept children unconditionally, no matter how they look. Their behavior, their uh, temperament, their personality—you accept them unconditionally. But one thing that we need to do also, we accept them according to their needs. Do you know that kids are very needy? <laughs> do you know that? Yes. They need your time a lot. They cry. <laughs> when I went to my daughter's house. When the kids, the grandkids, still only two, three years old, when I walk in, hi, Tata, Tata mean grandpa in Thai. Hi, Tata, come here, come here, sit here, <laughs> hi and seek, play. So I walk in, okay, hi and seek, play. I sit here. They demand you. They have a lot of needs. Do you accept their needs? I want to read one last scripture to show you that that's how God treats you. He accepts you unconditionally. Psalm 103, verses 3, 13 to 14. This is the last scripture. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. This scripture says that our Father in heaven accept us, love us, and have compassion on us. Think about this. Think about this carefully. Yesterday, somebody told me that the boss go on vacation, and the boss will not bring the cell phone and the computer along. Because during vacation, no one can call him, and no one can email him. <laughs> Pastor Da want me to do that? Sometimes I look at the phone, I try to text somebody in the church, and the sign come up. 
Silence, don't bother me at this time. Do you notice one thing about God? God allows you to talk to Him 24-7. No silence on the phone. You can ask Him for help even at 1 a.m. You cannot do that to me, please. <laughs> Pastor Da will not be happy. <laughs> you can ask Him anytime. You can pray to Him when you get, need direction what to do at 2 a.m. You can, God, what should I do? He answer you at 2 a.m. When you need healing, at any day, any time, God, heal me. He will not say, I'm sorry, I'm on vacation. Don't bother me, please. Just suffer for a few more days until I come back from vacation. He is a compassionate God. He accepts us unconditionally and accepts us, accept our personality, our temperament, our need. He is a compassionate God. He accepts us any time. He never say no to us. To help us. That is our God. Should we do that to children? Yes. I know it's hard. But we should do the same thing. We should show compassion to other people. God never turned us away. God never shut his ear from us. God never declined to help us. We are not his burden. We are his joy. Anytime we pray to him, even at 2 a.m., he smiles and says, what can I do for you? He is a compassionate God. Should we do that, the same thing to our, the children in, in our society? We are there to help them, love them. So number one, you offer to them unconditional acceptance and welcoming. So in conclusion, the teaching today, I can continue next week for more principle of how to Pass on the legacy, the biblical principle. This is part one. Number one, children matter to God. And children matter to you and me. We should love children and we should care for children. Two, we learn that children, actually, when you have relationship with children, you will be built up. They contribute something to you to grow up, to become more mature person. Three is the fundamental mission of parents and mom. Two, to raise the kids in a godly way and pass on to them spiritual and godly legacy from generation to generation to generation. It's your job. Parents in this room, I want to encourage you. Take serious about wanting to know your children in Wanting to see and fellowship with your children in heaven one of these days. You can save 10 million people in the world, but if your children go to hell, that is sad. You need to make sure your children are saved and know Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I will not pay the price of letting my children go to hell to build and make a church so that I can be famous in the world. No. My primary responsibility is to save my children, help them to know Jesus Christ, and pass on the godly legacy to generation, to generation, to generation. And the first thing you can offer to your children in raising your kids godly way is to accept them unconditionally. Accept them regardless of their appearance, their temperament, their behavior, and their needs. Show compassion to them, and they will experience the love of God through you. When you do that to them, they will see, wow, God must be like this to me too. And they will know God and believe in God because you represent God on earth. They never see God. They see you as a woman, a man of authority. So when they see, wow, a man and woman of authority over me, show compassion to me, I will know my God too. God show compassion to me. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for listening to the whole sermon. And I believe that the Lord spoke to you many things and you will put the teaching into practice. And when you obey the word of the Lord, you shall be blessed. 
the Lord really worked in my heart to produce so many teachings of different series. And we teach each series in detail. I would like to encourage you to listen to the whole series from lesson number one down to the end and follow each series carefully so that you will know the Word of God. The Bible says clearly that when you know the truth, when you have understanding and wisdom, you shall not make mistakes and you shall have success in life. So please take the Word of God seriously and listen to every series such as Spirit Led Living or Rejoice Always or Keys to Success or Walk By and Walk in the Spirit. There's so many series. God bless you. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you to reach your destiny and live an enduring legacy. I want you to declare the blessing upon your life. You will be full of wisdom. You are prosperous. You are healthy. You become an overcomer. You become spiritually mature. You become more like Jesus Christ. You have higher levels of anointing. You walk in great grace. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.